Hello Animator Islanders! Today we talk about another important ingredient of a good animation, breakdowns. Breakdowns are the poses that are between two key poses and they really define the kind of motion that you want to convey. So let's explore the possibilities and the potential that breakdowns have for your animation. First, we have to take a closer look at the bigger brother of the breakdown positions, which are the keys. And there are two kinds of keys. The first kind are the storytelling keys, and these are the minimum amount of images that you need to tell a story or to explain an action. Uh, I prepared an example of this little guy jumping over an obstacle, and those three poses are the minimum of poses that we need to explain what's going on here. And the second kind of keys are extremes. Extremes are poses uh, right before a change in direction is happening. And I added these, these extremes to our storytelling poses. It now looks like this. We have two new poses. We have this one where he's going down for the anticipation and in the next moment he's going to uh, jump. So there is a change in direction right here and then when he lands we have a similar case uh, from his jump he was still going in this direction is now catching himself after the jump he's still going that direction this is the last frame of going in that direction uh, and then he is about to get to go in this direction as he gets up and cheers so far all the poses i've shown are key poses and now we come to the topic of the video. Now we are about to add some breakdowns. So if we go purely by definition, the breakdown pose is a pose between two key poses. Let's look at a very simple case where we can see what the breakdown can do for us. Um, if we have two lines, and this is key pose one, and this is key pose two, uh, then how could the breakdown of this look like? Uh, if we assume that this is a stick that flips from one side to another, our um, breakdown could be like this. Or it could be like that. And if ac it's actually giving us a new information here. It's telling us, hey, this is not a stick. Maybe this is a book page flipping over. Or it could it, it could. It could be like this, and it could be like a whip cracking at the end. If we take a stationary bouncing ball, the ball starts up in the air and then it hits the ground. Um, like the biggest beginner mistake that you could possibly make is to draw the breakdown exactly in the middle, because this is not how physics work. So actually pretty early on in your animation career, you learn that objects accelerate while they fall, which is why in case of the bouncing ball, the um, frame that is in the middle of the animation time-wise is actually more up here, like after a third of the path down. So we actually learn pretty early on that there is something more to breakdowns than just drawing something exactly in the middle. And yet, if beginners start in betweening uh, or start making breakdowns, they would add a frame in between our two, uh, two key poses and they would just always look for the middle. Like, they would see, okay, here is the middle of the belly line and then, I don't know, the back is kind of like this maybe, and the feet are halfway unfolding, and the arms are like in the middle here. And this is a 
very mechanical way of doing it. We're just basically always looking for the middle and putting our line there. Or in case of 3D animation, people would just let the software interpolate and they get a weird floaty motion where the character is kind of gliding from one key to another. And of course, that's not the way of how you should be doing these things. Instead, you should use the breakdown to really give some extra information about what is going on, about the physical properties of your object, about how different parts of your object are made from different material or move at different speeds. Let's look at some of the options that you have. First of all, there is the overall arc that your motion is following. And in case of our example here, we have a couple of possibilities, actually. Um, we could say that he's just moving in, an, in a C curve. So that's one type of arc that we have is the C curve. Um, could also be in the other direction, of course. If it's a very fast motion, those sometimes don't go along an arc. They could be just straight. But usually you, 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 you would try, if it's an organic animation, you would always try to make it curvy and flowy uh, because a curve is also something that nat naturally occurred, occurs if you have a joint. You know, we, we, we tend to move in arcs because that's uh, how it looks when something rotates around a joint. Uh, so curves are built into us. But we still have options in this in this very example here. Like he doesn't need to go the very obvious curve. He could also he could also go in kind of like an S curve and shoot up. Maybe he's still fighting gravity and and uh, really springs up into his cheer. Then we could give him something like a, a little hook here. You know, it's still a curve, but. It's a more interesting curve. So yeah, we got C curves curved in different direction. We got a straight line and uh, we have S curves. And you know, we could also do other shapes like, like a hook or a saxophone, apparently. This is one of the biggest things that you can think about because it completely changes your in-betweens. And the next point we actually already heard a little bit about, it's easing. The big mistake that you can make uh, is if you always put this exactly in the middle because that does not give us any information. This is just bringing an object from one side to the other. It doesn't tell us that there was any picking up of speed or losing of speed. And if we have the, the case with the bouncing ball that we talked uh, about earlier, we have an ease in. It's actually accelerating, which is why it has more frames at the beginning than in the end. Yeah, then of course there's the opposite case where it's uh, losing speed, it's decelerating, and then it has more frames in the end than it has in the beginning. And of course it also can have both, you know, it can slowly pick up speed and then uh, decelerating again. And that's actually what's happening with humans a lot because we always need to build up speed. And then when we want to stop, we need to do something with that energy. You know, it's not gone all of a sudden. Uh, it, it needs to decelerate first. There are cases where you don't have an uh, ease in. For example, if you would pull a um, crossbow, you know, you would build up a lot of energy already. And when you let the uh, string go, it takes that energy that we already made by pulling it back and it immediately, it's immediately at full speed. But we would have an ease out, you know, the string would, would bounce back with an ease in and ease out. And for one example where we don't have an ease out, we can actually look at the bouncing ball coming down. Um, as it's coming down, it doesn't know that it is about to hit the ground. It's not slowing down, it's not easing out. It's going without breaking into the ground. And in case you wonder what happens with that energy, um, usually it's pushed uh, either into the, the jump up, it's deflected for the next jump, or it goes into the ground or into the squashing of the ball. And let's see how we can put this information into our little guy. Um, usually the head 
is actually very very heavy so his head could actually you know not be very far at this point it could be something like this or we say because of his victory he has so much energy that he jumps up into his cheering position and we could say that he's already almost there and in this case we not only applied easing we already used the next principle that we need to consider which is called favoring it's called favoring because obviously here we are favoring the green the green key and if we would you know put in a very strong ease um we would be favoring um the red key you might wonder what's the difference between favoring and ease uh, the thing is that you know ease is the physical principle if that is going on here it's 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 physics of acceleration deceleration and favoring could be done through more than just um just an ease um if you really want to favor his cheering pose um we could make an arc that has more frames up here or we could make um, as the animation is going on after that we could make even more keys that are very close to the green um, to the green key here uh, so it would be even more favoring this position also it is possible it is technically possible to um, do a favoring of in animation without an ease which in the case of the balls will look like this we have one speed here and then we have one speed here and then of course it would favor this section this pose but that doesn't make any sense you know you always uh, uh would want to would want it to decelerate at a, a at a rate that makes sense like this you know it's really cushion cushioning into the second pose but yeah just to show you it is possible to favor a pose without easing although you would never want to do that and then the next thing we have to talk about is overlap and follow through let's say we keep the head down because the head is actually quite heavy but what could already be uh, on its way up are the shoulder and the arms if you if you look at this we could give him a little a little shape like this we have different body parts following other body parts in this case the shoulder is pulling the head and the head is following there's something similar happening in the elbow the elbow is dragging up the forearm and everything here is just following we have different body parts leading and different body parts following and this is very important because beginners uh, they all tend to make it too even if we for example take the elbows um, it would be too even uh, if both elbows are pulling at the same time that would look too monotonous the, the animation would have too much of the same rhythm instead we could say maybe this elbow is already pulling up but this elbow here is still going down is still coming down from the jump one body part is already going up into the new pose and one other body part is still coping with the physic with the physics of the pose that was before and this kind of interweaving motions uh, is what makes an animation really interesting to watch this is already very con complex because we have actual body parts that are moving um, if we would give him a little um, like he was wearing a little baseball cap or something then it's a little easier to understand this is just cloth this is no material that that moves on its own um, so if we if we say he's already halfway on his way up with the body we know that the 
the cap can only be lagging behind because it doesn't it cannot move on its own so in case of cloth it's pretty easy to see uh, what is following what because you know the cloth or like long sleeves they're always being dragged behind and the thing that they are attached to are always the thing that is dragging it but in case of an arm you know sometimes the elbow is leading the motion sometimes the wrist is leading the motion sometimes elbow and wrist are just following a shoulder motion this can be a chain and this can switch during the same animation you know as this animation progresses here for example the uh, wrist could become what is leading the motion and this is something that you define in the breakdowns you know the the information what is pulling or pushing what at what point uh, this information is not in the key poses they don't give you that information of how the motion is happening at what speed it is happening and what is following what these are all things that you need to define uh, with your breakdowns go in different directions for different body parts try to find more interesting arcs you could also favor um, some parts of the body to one key and other parts to the other key for example we could decide that the body is already almost here so it's favoring the green key you see it's closer to this key but we could say the arms are being dragged behind so the arm or at least this arm maybe the other arm isn't uh, is favoring the red key and now you might be wondering, okay, we heard about breakdowns, but what about the next step? What are in-betweens? Well, how are they different from breakdowns? And well, the simple answer is that if you've done the breakdowns, you've done all the thinking. You have to find where there is an ease. You have to find which body parts are leading what other body parts at what moment in time. And then the in-betweens are something that really only uh, need to be filled in mechanically. We now know with this breakdown, we know that, you know, the in-between has to go here. And this now just really only goes more or less exactly in between. I mean, the in-between, I could still ease it and things like that. It's not completely mindless, but you know, it's just, you don't need to think uh, much anymore you just it's it's more handcraft than it is art so right now I'm actually recording this later as an afterthought to answer the question how many breakdowns you would actually need we would need one to communicate an ease in like from here to there um, and then we would need at least another one to communicate how the arc is going you know if it's going in that direction or in that direction we need a midpoint to make that clear and then as we are going to the next key um, we could either put in an ease uh, if we want him to to soft to go softly into the into the end key or if we say he actually has so much energy that he overshoots that he goes beyond the final frame the final key that we actually wanted that could look like this he's going over the key and then he's easing back those are the five cases that came to my mind where you need a uh, breakdown and it's actually a lot of them um, if you think about doing a 3d animation it's not enough to set a key here and to set a, a key here and let the computer do the rest oh and I actually forget another one um, like it could not only be mid path it could also be if we have a, a change in the chain um, that was what we were uh, talking about earlier if the elbow stops leading and now the wrist would be leading then we need another breakdown to uh, make that clear and all these things can actually happen more than in the list here you know you might have an s-curve 
then you have more than one arc midpoint. You know, you, 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 ha you suddenly have three more points that you need to define. Or a change in chain could also uh, happen several times during an animation. You know, the shoulder could be leading first and then the elbow and then the wrist. So yeah, you, you basically you need as many breakdowns uh, as you need to communicate all these informations that um, change the way how the character is supposed to move. Let's maybe do it for, for this little moment where the guy is recovering from the jump and um, I show you how I think about this. We actually don't, at the moment we don't have that many frames. We could add more frames, but my guess at the moment is that probably all the frames that we are going to put in are breakdowns. Um, no, no in-betweens because, yeah, we only, if we work on twos, we only have two more frames. And um, I'll probably add a third one. But my bet is that all these three uh, frames are going to be breakdowns um, because I have so much to communicate in this time. Uh, the first thing I could be, be uh, communicating is that we want to have an ease in for his body because his body is the the heaviest part, we want his shoulders to already go up. Um, and his head is actually going down as he um, builds up the momentum. And uh, yeah, the cap certainly has to lag behind to follow through. Um, yeah, and this arm as we talked about earlier, is still going back. Still recovering from the jump. And now I want this leg to really push him up. To really, to really push him up. And the other one is still more or less in the same position it was in the frame before. And Here the elbow is guiding the, the arm in the next position. And then here, as I said, we don't have that many frames. We really now need to decide what our path is. And I'm, I'm gonna go with the generic one, but you might wanna try something more interesting. Here the uh, cap is still just lagging behind. Um, and now the, the head could really take the lead Um, the eyes are still closed. During fast movement, uh, we always close eye our eyes. Maybe the mouth is already beginning to open. Um, we could actually we could actually claim that the this leg already pushed the body all the way up. Maybe on this side, it's it's still lagging behind. Um, you know, we, we, we are asymmetrical beings. We usually have one body part that is stronger, one body side that is stronger than the other. Um, yeah, and here, maybe it's interesting if, if the arm now is doing an overshoot, the body is not doing an overshoot yet, but the, the arm here is already overshooting its goal and the hand is lagging behind here and the um, down here the elbow is taking the lead up and now it's overshoot time for the for the body I want to bend him in that direction the nose is still lagging behind it's doing a little follow through here but the arm is now in its final position uh, that's already interest also interesting if some parts are already in their final positions and other parts are not and uh, for the hand we could do an ease out into the new position um, the mouth could be doing an overshoot, so it's extended beyond our final frame, the green one. And here's an ease out 
into the green position. This one was already um, fully extended since a few frames. We shouldn't change that. And maybe we're doing an ease for this arm. Hand is still being dragged behind. And the eyes could already be open. And now let's see how it looks. Okay, it's uh, not the best, but you can see it's interesting because different, different body parts are coming to a stop at different times. Whoop, whoop. I like the left arm especially. The, the right one doesn't work as much, but I think the left one is interesting. Yeah, so um, you see, so far we don't have any uh, in-betweens. We only have breakdowns. And if I would work in a 3D software, I would have to set a key on every single one of these uh, breakdowns. Um, so you 3D people really set a lot of keyframes. You need to give the computer something to work with. Oh, uh, one word of warning though. What we just did here, I just applied this very template blueprint like. Those are all tricks that work, that make an animation look more interesting. If you have this kind of contrast of different directions and something is already fully extended while the other body part is not, those are tricks that you can use. But if you just apply them like just because, you will not win an Oscar with your animation because that's just following blueprints. That's just following a routine. Instead, what you should always do is shoot reference, uh, work with actors, maybe even depending on what you do, work with stunt people that can do the kinds of motions that you want to animate. Uh, because this is where you will notice the real stuff, the stuff that is happening in real life. Okay, this is everything that came to my mind about breakdowns. If you have anything to add, please write it in the comments below. And I hope you join us for the next video.